OpenAI's Responses API is here, and it's jam-packed with powerful features. Hey, my name is Ben, and in this video, I'm gonna break down the top four features of the new Responses API. I'll show you exactly how they work, and give you real examples so you can start using them right away. Let's get into it. One of the biggest pain points you'll find when building AI-powered applications is the fact that all the models you use have a knowledge cutoff, usually a year or so prior to the release date of the model, which means to get recent data, you have to do it another way, maybe doing a web search or web scraping and then pushing that data into the AI context. But OpenAI has just made that so easy. I'm here in Cursor and I'm looking at a really simple application I built that uses the Responses API to do a web search. At the beginning of it, it's just like you'd expect before. You import the OpenAI package, but just make sure this is updated to the latest one. And then you set up your client as before, passing your API key. But here's where things start to get different. Now you can say client.responses. So this is telling it to use the new responses API. And then we can create a new session from there. In terms of model, it supports everything from GPT-40 upwards. So it supports O3, O3 mini. I'll use those ones in a later example. And now all you have to do in the tools parameter is just give it a type of web search preview. And that's all you have to do. Now the session has access to do a web search. So what it decides it needs to get information that more current information from the search you can just do it with this tool. And by the way, when I built this Python app in Cursor, I did set up a rule so it knew this structure. So if you look up here in our web browsing rule, it just says to use OpenAI Responses API for web browsing, do it like this. And then it gives some sample code right out of the OpenAI documentation. I find this actually works much better than trying to reference the online documentation all the time. It's just here in the background so it knows exactly how to build this. And now if we run that Python application, and we asked for golf news from today, it should know that this is asking for information from today and do the web search. So let's see if it returns the correct results. Okay, there we go. Now it's actually telling us today's date's March 25th. So it's telling us that, and it's giving us news from the last couple of days, which is great. And if we have a look at the show raw response, this is the actual response we get from OpenAI. We're gonna see some differences now. So since we're doing a web search, it actually returns uh, what they call URL citations. So it splits the data out into the title and then the URL itself, the link to the actual article. And we see the article here, which is great because then in our AI powered application, we can actually just add the citation into our application and that's all taken care of for us. Another thing you'll notice is that it gives you a response ID now. If I jump over to the OpenAI developer dashboard, now I can see all these responses here are in the have log files. So if I click on this one I just did, and now I'm gonna go in here and see the prompt and the response. And then we see again that ID here, and I'll explain why this is important a bit later. When you start building AI powered applications, you figure out pretty quick that often you need data returned in a structured way. So the responses API has improved this structured output feature. I'm back in cursor and I took that simple web search application, enhanced it a bit to actually search for sentiment on cryptocurrencies. So it's actually a two phase approach. So first it looks for the last 24 hours and passes in the crypto name for all the news articles. And again, we're using the web search preview tool. But now under our text parameter, we're actually saying we want a format and we want the type to be JSON schema. So this means that we want a JSON object returned. We have to give it a name, so we'll call this one crypto news. And then this is the important part. You can give it a schema and set this new strict property to true, which means it has to follow this exact schema. So if we look at that schema, now we're saying we want a collection of items. These are our news articles. And then for each one of those articles, we want a title, content, we want source, a URL and a timestamp, and they're all gonna be required. Another not really nice feature is you can set this additional properties flag to false, which means I want this exact scheme. I don't want the AI to just make up a new property in this list here and add it on. Even if it makes sense, I just want what's here. I pass all those results to another responses session. And this time we're using O3 mini because we want it to be more powerful to actually analyze the sentiment. This time we're using the sentiment schema. And if you look at that, now we're saying, now we want a sentiment to come back. You can only do one of these three things, either it's bullish, bearish, or neutral. Then we want a confidence score, which will be a number, as well as a list of the key points about why they made that analysis. And again, we're not allowing any more additional properties. So I think you can see how this makes building an AI powered application so much easier because you have guarantee of the data coming back and exactly what format it's gonna be in. And if we run that and say analyze their Bitcoin news, it makes building the UI really easy because now we're just taking the sentiment, for example, we know exactly what data format is coming back. We know the confidence format. So you can just put that into your user interface. And actually this is a nice little application. This works really well. If you're interested in building with AI, make sure you subscribe to the AI Unleashed newsletter. With the developments now happening at such a lightning speed, I try to cut through the noise and just give you the relevant information 
and important news you need to know about building with AI. It's the first link in the description. I hope to see you there. Another new feature in the Responses API is allows you really, really easily build a RAG system. So think of this scenario. You have a customer that has a bunch of documents, maybe they're internal documents, and you want to give all that knowledge that's in those documents to the AI agent. So people can search for information and get questions answered. So it's really easy to do this now. So let's look at this example. We have a frequently asked questions document. So this one might be more for a customer. These are all the questions they keep getting. And so you want all this information to be fed into an AI agent that could answer these questions automatically without having a human having to do it. So this is everything from what products can be returned to how to returns work. And I just pulled this off hugging face, but it's a good example. Before we can ask questions about this in the API, we first have to upload this document to open AI servers. And that's actually a two-step process. So the first is you have to create a vector store. And so we're doing that here with client.vectorstores.create. And the vector store is you can think of as basically a collection of documents. So you do this once and you can add a bunch of documents to that store. So then to add to the vector store, you have to first create the file. So upload the file. And then once you have the file ID, all you have to do is say vectorstores.files.create and then pass that in. You'll be able to see that in developer console under storage and then vector stores. And you'll see your vector store here. And then underneath that, it'll show you the files that have been loaded. So now I've got that file successfully loaded. So that's setting up that vector store as a one-time thing. So now I built an application that actually uses that vector store and does a search inside of it. So we see here the vector store ID, that's what we got when we created the vector store. And then all I have to do is just pass it in a tool that's called type file search and then give it the vector store ID. So we run that now and ask the question, what is your return policy? Now it comes back with the answers from that document. It even says here sources is that FAQ document, which is perfect. That was so easy to set up and so powerful. You can think if you have like a lot of business documents, you could just all put them into that vector store. You get an application like this going in a couple of minutes. So one thing that could be a bit tricky with AI APIs is you always have to manage the context and the message history yourself. Basically you have to manage your own state, but that changes with the responses API. And that's because OpenAI now allows you to let them manage the entire state. And how that looks is it has this parameter now now, for example, called previous response IDs. And as I was showing you earlier, with that response ID, basically you can pick that up, load that in, and then it's gonna give you that as the context. What that means for this simple chatbot application, this is all I have to do. And then it manages the state for me and it manages the conversation history for me. What that also means is I could set up a system where I record the user's last response ID. And then next time they come into my application, maybe that's even a few months later, I can just bring up their whole history and have that as context and have that managed automatically for me. No longer we have to worry about managing the context. It just does it for us. So I can just do multiple prompts here. But if you think about it, it's actually much more efficient now. I don't have to keep passing back and forth all the data. It actually stores on the open AI side and optimizes on the open AI side. So it's just giving you the new response based on your previous conversations. Just one last thing for the developer to have to worry about. I'm really impressed with the job the OpenAI team did with this API. It's really well designed. And those are just my top four. There's other ones like computer use, for example. So there's a lot of features in here. And if you're interested in building with AI and this type of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.